Before we get to the interview, I'd like to tell you about a special offer to subscribe to the Business Observer, which covers essential business news in Florida every day online and every Friday with a print edition. Unlock every Business Observer article on our website and app for only $1 a week. Sign up today and stay up to date with all the business news you need to be better at business. Go to businessobserverfl.com slash subscribe. Hello and welcome to From the Corner Office. I'm Mark Gordon, Managing Editor of the Business Observer. Today's guest is Ashikal Timor, President of Florida Gulf Coast University in Fort Myers. Welcome. Thanks for being here. Thank you so much for having me. Awesome. Well, it's going to be a really good conversation, and we're going to start with uh, you've been president for about 10 months now, right? We're, we're coming almost on a year, which is pretty exciting. What have been uh, any surprises so far 10 months in? Well, um, first of all, I'll tell you um, the past 10 months, I every day I come to the campus with a big smile on my face and um it has been such a great um, experience. Um, what I can tell you, the biggest surprise to me that how much as an economist, I have been calculating the opportunity cost of time every day, right? We have great ideas, uh, great things all day long uh, on campus and great things happening and how um, I can allocate my time to be there um, with our students, with our faculty, staff, and with our community all the time. So there's so much uh, to do, so much to involve, so much great things. And so it is, um, that was very surprising to me that as an economist, I apply it all the time. Yeah, that's interesting that you have that, uh, uh, that mindset time management. And you said there's been a, been a smile on, on your face. Um, if you haven't, I'm saying this to the audience because you, you were there, but uh, the day that you were, I think, named president, there were some great photos out there and it's so genuine. I think you maybe take us through that, but you walked into this room and you got a standing ovation and the beaming look on your face was so, uh, I thought, sincere and genuine. Tell us about that day where you were, I think it was when you were officially named president. Yes, it was, um, you, you know, my inauguration, you know, formal installation. Uh, I'll tell you, it is, um, I, uh, it, it is really, there are not enough words for me to express my gratitude and how uh, honored I am with this position being FGCU's um, president and serving to our students and our community. Um, when I walked in the room, the first thing that when I look at the faces of our students and then walk around getting high fives from our faculty, staff, and community members, our alumni, um, this is a big family here. And uh, they gave me the energy. Um, and it was um, such a big day um, in my life. And uh, the moment that I look at those pictures or I remember that day, still I feel that excitement and energy. I can tell you that. Well, it's, it's certainly, I was, I was looking at it again, some of the stories on FGCU's website, and I was looking at it to research for this interview. And um, you feel that energy from looking at the photos, so that's that's pretty cool. But let's take a step back. You know, you, you've really you started in the trenches. I mean, you were teaching assistant 25 years ago, and and you obviously have worked your way through higher education. Tell us about that part of your career, the early goings, and and was it a goal to be a college president someday? Oh gosh, this is a very hard question. Um, not really. Um, Mark, what I can tell you is that um, my um, work ethic, the way that I look at things is that always you do, you give 100% of yourself for the job that you do. And always I try to do better than yesterday. That is my philosophy. So when I started um, as uh, as a teaching assistant, to me, 
the most important thing is, um, you know, helping my students uh, to be the best, to um, make sure that they get the best out of me as their support in the classroom. Um, and their success, I own it, their success was my success, right? I started always that way, um, even though I, I can tell you uh, when I started as a teaching assistant, um, I, I did not know how students learned from me very much with my really broken English. So when I started, as you may uh, know this, when I came to the US, I had no words in English. So while I was teaching them economics, they were teaching me English. So we had this uh, wonderful um, relationship. But to me, at that moment, my job was really um, focusing on uh, what I can do uh, my best to yeah. teach them uh, the outcomes. Yeah, let's skip to that because I have them. Tell, tell us about learning English. I just think it's so amazing. I mean, you came here... Um, as you just said, you didn't speak English. And where did you, you know, tell us about your immigrant story and, and how that sort of shaped the leader that you are? Well, um, I don't know if we have enough time for that, but I'll yeah. do my best. Um, one thing is that when first um, my husband and I came here, we were um, newly uh, weds and we had one thing in our minds um, to um, finish our higher education. I came here to complete my PhD um, in the United States. Um, really, we did not come as migration purposes. It was the dedication to um, coming to the best country in the world, uh, the best higher education system. And um, it was, um, at the beginning, I can tell you, very challenging. Yeah. Learning the language is not just uh, learning the uh, words or, or vocabulary or the grammar. It's about learning the culture, um, you know, building relationships. Um, so um, we, uh, both of us, my husband and I, um, registered uh, for English as a second language program. And, and I spent um, all my days just writing, um, listening, and trying to um, speak um, in English, finding every yeah. opportunity that I can do. Um, but um, I can I can tell you it was not easy, but I was very dedicated to do my best. Yeah, you, you got to be really resilient. And you, you came from Turkey, is that right? When when you were here, correct, husband, you were here. correct, correct. How did how did that? Well, even when you were in Turkey and growing up, and I read a little bit about your parents. You talked about work ethic. How did your parents help shape your work ethic? And then coming to here, how did that sort of change your mindset on on what you're doing now in your career? Right. So um, one thing um, really came from my family roots, uh, the family values is that um, always do your best, try to do your best. Right. And that kind of embedded in me. Um, and with that, you know, you cannot just do everything alone, build relationships, and then uh, invest in those relationships and work with others to, um, you know, achieve the best, you know, um, always create synergy. Um, I think I grew up with those values and uh, trust uh, being honest all the time and being transparent. And you can get a lot of things when you are building those trusted relationships. And that is um, who I am. And that's what I do all day, every day. Yeah. And, and uh, I read something else really interesting about your work ethic. So you're in, I think, Naples or Southwest Florida, but you finished your education in Tampa. And that took a lot of effort and planning. Tell us about that part of your life and how you did all that. 
Well, um, I really wanted to um, stay in, um, you know, Southwest Florida in Naples, but I really, uh, you know, wanted to have my PhD, traditional PhD in economics. Um, at that time, it, we are talking about year 1998, 1999, while well, FGCU was just um, established, right? Yeah. They did not have any programs for me. So the only option for me to commute to Tampa. And so I made an audacious goal to myself that, okay, I'll be, um, you know, I'll drive back and forth to Tampa to get my PhD because I had a great opportunity um, to work in uh, in Naples and Southwest Florida. So four days a week for four years, I uh, I was back and forth to drive to Tampa. I can tell you that I lived on I seventy five for four yes, years, I bet. and um, my son was um, a little at the time, and um, so many. Many times he was in the back seat with me driving back and forth. Really? Yes. Um, and um, but again, my um, belief in higher education and quality of higher education in the state university system of Florida. Um, I am so glad that today I did it. Um, graduated from USF in four years, PhD in uh, economics. Um, I'm very proud of it. And I have a lot of stories to tell about my program and my uh, degree achievement. Yeah, I'm sure. And as a side, you know, as a, as a parent of a 15 year old, and I'm obviously your, your kids are older now too. Those those times in the car are kind of valuable, even though we don't want to be stuck in traffic. I have learned that you get some of the best conversations with your kids when you're in the car, right? I'm sure you had a bond with your son that is pretty important. Absolutely, Mark. I have uh, other stories about that. So when my son came to the college age and when we were doing, um, you know, campus visits and, you know, looking at many different options for him. When we went to USF, uh, he was like, this is it. Really? You know, I remember I have a lot of memories here. And so he chose um, to go to USF. And last May, he graduated from USF. And I think his decision was based on those conversations in the car and the time he spent with me when he was little yeah. uh, on on the campus. Um, and there is another interesting um, 360 story um, about that. The when when I first went to USF, I got my Ph.D. orientation in the big um, room in the um, student union. It was the, you know, first time PhD student orientation. And then um, my um, son did his orientation in the same room. He also graduated from engineering department in the same room, and I was confirmed in the same room. Wow. So, Yes, it was like the 360, how things started in there and ended, uh, almost ended in there. But who knows, yeah. maybe my daughter will go to, um, you know, uh, similar programs or similar things like that. Of course, I want her to come to FGCU, but we yeah. will see. Yeah, well, a proud, proud mom moment. That's pretty, pretty neat, pretty awesome. So going back to your current position now, so you're, you're president, obviously we talked about that at FGCU, and you've had some other positions there as well. What, what do you look for in leaders? So now that you're, you've been a leader, but what do you look for in other leaders, whether it's a dean or a senior academic advising type position? What things stand out to you when you're looking for good leaders? That's, that's a very good question. Um, to me, uh, leadership is all about influence. Leadership is all about inspiring people, 
you know, you have the vision, you have the goals in mind, and how you bring people together with your vision, how you inspire them to work together um, toward where you want to be. And that is one thing that I expect our our leaders to become uh, the inspiring um, individuals and influencers to be where we want to be. To me, that is the most important um, thing about leadership. And leaders also um, uh, must really value on communication. Um, I expect that our leaders are, are good communicators because um, communication is like an oxygen uh, for yeah. an organization. Um, to me, when you combine you know, inspiring individuals and communicating with them all the time, remind them the vision you want to go to or the goals you want to achieve, that is the power of leadership. And that's what I expect our leaders to do. Yeah. And so you're, you're talking about communication, obviously so key, and then lead by example, another, another big one. What advice did you get as sort of an up and coming leader from somebody in your life that sticks out in your mind? What advice helped you grow as a leader? Um, you know, um, one thing is that it is um, I adapted from my mentors and I adapted from uh, every experience that I had always tried to do better than what you have done yesterday. Um, really uh, more of respecting what you do and caring about what you do. Um, to me, um, it is so important. And that's what I say all the time. Uh, my leadership is about um, caring, um, respecting uh, to what you do, and always bringing people together and creating that team environment uh, with, a, with trust, um, getting the results that you want to see. Is, and you mentioned mentors. Is there one or two mentors that have stood out in your life that have great meaning to you and why? Well, um, I truly um, believe in mentorship. Um, in my career, in my life, um, I really had um, so many individuals influ influencing me, inspiring me. Um, but um, a few examples I can provide. Um, um, Ed Morton, uh, who uh, was the um, CEO and president of Naples Community Hospital uh, in early times. Uh, he was one of the influencers um, in my life. Um, I had, um, I still have Kathleen Pasadomo, uh, sure. who has been so influential. Uh, the my professional growth, uh, who inspired me in um, so many different ways. So I can give you um, two uh, names and two examples. Well, Senator Pasadomo, certainly as state Senate president, this she's done obviously a lot of work before then, but as state Senate president this last session, she really did a great job leading by communication, right? She was very clear on what, what the goals are going to be in the Senate and then went to execute. Absolutely. I can tell you I learned from the best yeah. how communication is important um, in our personal and professional lives. It's really important. For that reason, um, I started my presidency with weekly emails to the entire FTCU community. So every week I reflect on what I'm working on. I am, you know, talking about the things that I, you know, I'm doing or I will be doing or things are happening on our campus. Yeah. I email to our students. I email to faculty and staff. So um, at least on the surface, they know uh, what is happening. So that communication to me is very important. Yeah, they, you've uh, I, I've seen in my research, too, you do that monthly I think on the president's page, right? What's going on? Happy July 4th this weekend or things like that. So you're obviously always communicating with, with the people at FGCU. 
And I am learning from, you know, across the board, you know, how people want to be communicated. So it's not what yeah. you think that you are communicating, but also asking others, um, you know, what their expectations are, um, you know, what channels or what things that we should be using in terms of communicating with others. You know, email is one way, but you can find me all the time around the campus and talking to students, talk to faculty, staff, um, because I, I believe that firsthand communication on the spot is as important as, you know, long-term uh, or short-term communication. Definitely. So I feel like as we're getting to the end here, there's a question that probably could fill up another podcast, but if you were to sum up some of the challenges or one or two of the biggest challenges facing college presidents in higher education today. You know, there's so many, um, you know, academic freedom and the cost of college, right? There's so many big picture things. What, what are some or one or two of the challenges you see right now in higher education? Well, you're absolutely right. We can, we can have another, uh, you know, podcast for this, but I'll start by saying uh, is things are changing. We are in a big um, evolution again um, with technology, especially artificial intelligence, um, changing um, the way that um, people are today um, uh, transforming a lot of things, right? Artificial intelligence is going to be um, the next level, the way that we experience with internet, the, the, the way that we experience with, um, um, you know, uh, adoption of internet, uh, how artificial intelligence will change um, teaching and learning practices, right? Um, to, to me, figuring that out is going to be very important. Today at FGCU, we have an initiative that how we're going to cross the curriculum, um, uh, help our students leverage AI for better teaching and learning opportunities. And to me as a president, I want to make sure that our students graduate from our institution knowing um, the effect of um, artificial intelligence, getting ready and being prepared for workforce. It yeah. is very, very important. And as a college president, I want to make sure that we prepare students for the careers um, that um, even the adoption of AI changes those careers and the knowledge, skills, and abilities necessary, but how do we prepare them um, to become the preferred um, candidates? Even yeah. artificial intelligence is changing those areas. It's very, very important for us, um, and it's an important challenge that we adapt in our institution in a way to prepare our students, not only for today's workforce, but also tomorrow's. It's yeah. very, very important that they are personally and professionally prepared. Yep, stay ahead of everything. All right, before we let you go, we are gonna do three rapid fire questions. Okay, I always say, are you ready? But we're not really giving you a choice. So, okay, what is your favorite thing to eat for breakfast? Oh my, uh, definitely eggs. All right, excellent. Would you rather sail around the world or drive around North America in a van? Oh, that's an easy one. Of course, sail around the world. Yes. Well, you've pro and you've been world traveled having not been from here. Okay. <laughs> yes. And Last. we are, by the way, we are, Mark, we are sailors. So that's excellent. a wrong question for me. <laughs> All right. Excellent. Well, that's good. That's another podcast conversation. Last question. How many hours of sleep do you need a night so that you're not cranky the next day? Well, the best one is seven hours, but I have not been achieving that one yet. So I'll get there soon. I right. promise. Something to work toward. Excellent. <laughs> President Shugel, Florida Gulf Coast University. Thank you so much for joining us on the From the Corner Office podcast. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for listening to From the Corner Office Podcast. I'm your host, Mark Gordon. This podcast was produced by Reed Corley of The Corley Company in Sarasota. 
To hear more episodes of From the Corner Office, go to businessobserverfl.com.